Hi, I'm Jonathan Engelsma. In this screencast, we're going to take a look at Lex. In particular, we're going to give you a brief introduction to lexical analysis. We're going to talk about what Lex exactly is. We'll talk about how it works and give you some examples. And then we'll wrap up by a little hands-on demo of a sample program we're writing that utilizes Lex. So in, under, in order to understand Lex, we need to take a look at the larger language processing stack of the typical compiler out there today. So we start out with a source file or a character stream and we feed this into the front end or the first phase of compilation which is known as lexical analysis. Um, sometimes we call this modular software a scanner uh, or a tokenizer but it generates a stream of tokens and tokens are groups of characters that mean certain things in whatever target language we're trying to or whatever type uh, source language we're trying to compile. And we take that token stream and we typically feed it into a parser which does syntactical analysis and produces a parse tree. That parse tree then can be fed into another processor that is doing semantic analysis and code generation um, off in that parse tree. This is going to produce some type of abstract syntax tree or possibly some other intermediate form which can then be uh, processed by another module that will try to do machine independent code improvement. And this phase is optional. We may skip this altogether and go right to target code generation. If we do this we're going to end up with some type of intermediate form which goes into our target code generation module which ultimately produces a file of the target language. Now that itself could also go through another phase. We might want to do machine specific code improvement. So that's the entire compiler stack of your typical compiler. And it's this very first um, phase that we're going to be looking at in the remainder of this screencast. So we're looking at lexical analysis or the scanner part of our compiler. So lexi lexical analysis, just to make it a little bit more clear, takes the source code, so up in the upper left you see a very simple swap function written in the C language and it consists of various tokens that are valid in the C language. So our scanner is going to take that input source and produce a stream of tokens as we see depicted here. So the very first token in the file is the keyword void followed by the identifier swap which is something the programmer introduced it's the name of a function followed by a left parent all the way to the final closing right brace and of course it's this token stream that we feed into the parser to do syntactical analysis and to ultimately build our parse tree so what is lex lex is a scanner generator so instead of writing a scanner by hand, which is not that difficult to do for very, very small languages, but could become very complicated if we have a larger set of tokens. So Lex will allow us to describe a set of regular expressions, and with each of those regular expressions, we can associate an action. And these actions are going to be written in the C programming language. When we run Lex on this input file, which lists out these regular expressions and their associated actions, Lex will generate a table-driven scanner. And it will place that code in a file called lex.yy.c by default. Now, Lex is the original Unix Lex utility. And it's been, op it's been implemented um, in the open source in a program known as Flex. So when you hear people talking about Lex in Flex, they're essentially talking about this same utility. So Lex input is fairly straightforward. We basically are going to have a text file, a source file, with three parts to it. The very first part is optional. And it can contain lines that control dimensions of the tables that are generated internal to Lex. Um, 
It can contain definitions for text replacements. Um, it can contain global C code that is going to be utilized by the actions. And there's a special syntax for including C code in that first part. And we'll take a look at that later in our hands-on example. We terminate this first part with the token percent percent. So the percent percent uh, token up there separates the first part from the second part. And the second part is where we list out our regular expressions. So we're going to have a regular expression pattern, then some white space, and then an action. And the actions are going to be C code. It could be a single C statement separated or terminated with a semicolon, or it could be a code block where we have a left brace followed by one or more valid C statements and a close right curly. So we're going to use a block, of course, if we have more than one statement that we want to execute when a pattern is recognized, or a single statement if we only have one thing to do. And we can have a arbitrary number of these. This section is terminated with a percent percent token also. And following that, we have the third part of the Lex input file. And that third part is also optional. And it typically consists of, if we do have something there, it's going to be C code, which is simply used as is. So if we have different functions or different things we're going to do in our actions, um, we can actually put them down in that third part. So those are the basic three sections in our Lex input file. Let's look at a really simple example. So here's a file that I named ex1.l. So our Lex files typically have a .l extension on them. In this example, I don't have a first or second part, so they're just blank. So all you see is my action, my, my pattern action pairs um, delineated with the double percents. So the very first thing I've got here is the string hello space world. So that is a valid regular expression. And it says look for the token hello space world. And the action here is a printf statement. And it says goodbye in all caps with a new line. So when I process a source file, this pattern will match any string hello space world. And when that's seen, instead of printing out hello space world, it will simply print out the word goodbye. The next pattern is a dot, which basically says match any character. And what I do when I match any other character is just an empty C statement. So I'm essentially ignoring everything else. So the only thing I'm going to do here is look for the words hello space world in my input. And whenever I see it, I'm going to print out goodbye. Everything else I will simply ignore. So once again, the goodbye, the print statement prints out goodbye anytime hello world is encountered. And my second pattern here does basically nothing for any other character that we see in the input. Now we can run this code by first processing the lex file. So we're going to feed the, the source file ex1.l to the lex program as you see here. When the lex program runs, if the input is valid, it's going to save the generated scanner or tokenizer in a file called lex.yy.c. So the very next thing you see me doing here is compiling the scanner. Now, the scanner consists of a function called yylex. But in this case, I'm going to use it as is. I'm just going to run that function on my input iteratively until I hit end of file. So I can grab a kind of a prefabricated main out of the lex library. And you see me linking with a minus ll here. So when I do that, um, it's going to grab the main routine, the default main routine, out of that library. So I can go ahead and run it, which is the next thing I do. I run the scanner here and take input from standard input. So you can see that when I ran this, I typed in the input hello space world and my Lex, my scanner obediently printed out goodbye and then I end a filed 
and that was it. If I would have typed any other characters here, which I didn't, it would simply ignore them and do nothing with them. So that was a very, very simple example of a scanner that I generated using Lex. And you can see how it's very straightforward to define it, compile it, and run it. So there's lots of very sophisticated regular expressions we can come up with. And I've placed some of them here just to give you some examples. So the string ABC is just going to match the string ABC. I can also use ranges. So here you see in brackets an A-Z followed by a uppercase A-Z. So that expression would recognize any lower or uppercase letter. In the next example, I got a dog dot star cat. This will match any string that has the prefix dog, D-O-G, and ends with the string cat, C-A-T. So the dot star says any other character repeated zero or more times is acceptable. In the fourth example, I have A-B in parentheses followed by a plus sign. This regular expression matches one or more occurrences of the string AB concatenated together. So ABAB would be acceptable. And any length string, any length combination of AB concatenated with itself. In the next example, I've got a left brace with a caret A-Z and all of that followed by a plus. This regular expression matches any string of one or more characters that do not include the lowercase letters a through z. So the caret at the beginning is negation. It says anything but those characters. And the plus on the end, of course, means one or more. In the last example, I have a plus minus in braces followed by a question mark. The question mark means it's optional. So this is going to give me any string of digits, any string of one or more digits, with an optional prefix of a plus or minus. So that's a really brief introduction to Lex. Let's go ahead now and take a look at a more involved hands-on example of how I might use Lex and actually incorporate it into my own C program. So in this demonstration I'm going to use Lex to process a textual configuration file that I want to use for some hypothetical program. And I have a sample here in my uh, disk, so it's called config.in, my sample, and basically in this configuration file I'm going to have some name value pairs separated by a colon and the value on the left side is my name string so it's describing the piece of configuration data and over on the right is the actual value so I have four different pieces of information that I want to define the first one is DB underscore type and this is the type of my database and over to the right I'm going to have a string and it can be any sequence of characters uh, alpha uh, alphabetical characters um, has to start with an alphabetical character and then after that can be any sequence of alphabetical characters and digits. DB name is my next one and DB name also um, expects the same type of identifiers as DB type. My third one is a DB table prefix which can contain the same thing and also these identifiers can contain underscores as you see here in the input. And then the last piece of information is a db uh, underscore port followed by a colon and then an integer value, so a sequence of digits. Now we could probably brute force parse this um, in, a, in a really simple way, uh, but let's just take a look at how we could define um, a simple lex input file that will recognize tokens of this type and then we'll show how to integrate that into our own C program that is processing this configuration file. So once again this is kind of a, a simple format but you could imagine more complex tokens and a more complicated um, input file 
But what we're trying to do here is just show you how to use Lex and how to take the generated tokenizer that Lex creates and integrate that into our C program. So let's get started. To start out, I'm going to define a header file, a .h file, um, because I need to include some common um, symbols in both my tokenizer as well as the client program I'm going to write that utilizes that tokenizer. So I'm going to call this uh, program um, or this header file uh, myscanner.h and then I'll write um, the tokenizer that uses this. So we'll go ahead and create a file called myscanner.h and what I'm going to do is define a symbol for each uh, token, each type of token that is in my config file. So the first one I had was db underscore type. So I'm going to define a variable or a symbol here type and I also had a name. So I'm going to f define one name and I had a table prefix Okay, so these are the different types of tokens that my uh, scanner has to recognize. So let's go ahead now and write our Lex file. So I'm going to create a input file for Lex called myscanner.l. And the first thing I need to do is include that header file that I just created. I need to do this in my Lex input file using a special token. I need to start out with a percent left curly and then I can put any C code I want. So I'm going to put an include. Since it's in my local directory I'm going to use quotes here instead of a angle bracket. So I'm going to include my scanner.h and that makes all those pound defines available in the actions that I'm going to associate with my patterns. But I also have to close this section off with a percent right curly. And that's the first part of my Lex file. So now I'm going to write the middle part, the second part that has the patterns and actions. So the first token I want to specify is the colon. I need to separate the name and the value by colon. So I'm going to um, write colon. I'm going to tab over a little bit and I'm simply going to write a single statement action which says return colon which was one of my pound defines. The next token I'm going to recognize is the keyword db underscore type. So I'm going to put that in quotes, db underscore type. And for that I'm going to return type. And I do this with all the keywords that I need. So those are my keywords. I also want to recognize identifiers. Remember, these have to start with a lower or uppercase alphabetical character followed by any number of alphabetical characters, digits, and underscores. So we'll write that as follows. And I also need to write recognize integers and I want them to start with a non-zero digit. So. And I want it to ignore white space, so I'll have a rule with a space, a tab, and a line feed. And any white space that comes my way, I'm just going to ignore by putting an empty statement. Anything else would be invalid. Any other characters would be an error. So I'll just print F here. That concludes my actions. Now do notice that those keywords I put first because technically those keywords would actually map, match my identifier expression here as well. But what Lex does is it takes them in the order it finds it. So it's going to see db underscore type rule before it sees the identifier rule. So it's going to return a type instead of an identifier when we see db name. If that db name rule was after the identifier rule, 
we'd have a problem here because it would always return identifier and we'd never get a type back. So now we need the third part. And in this third part, since we're going to incorporate this into a C program, we have to define a function called yywrap. And we'll spare you on the details right now, but if we're using multiple input files, this yywrap would come into place. But for now, you can just treat this as boilerplate. We just are going to define it as follows. And that'll suffice. So just take that on faith for now. If you're interested in what it is, you can Google around and, and develop a better understanding of that. But for now, if we're going to integrate this thing in a C program, we need to do this. So let's see if this will compile. So we'll save it and switch over. And there is our file. So we'll just say lex space my scanner.l. And it looks like we did everything correct. We got no errors. And if we do a directory, sure enough, you'll see the file lex.yy.c got generated. So the last thing we need to do now is write a simple C program that utilizes the yylex function that has been placed in that file. So let's go ahead and write a program. We'll call it myscanner.c and I'm going to need some standard I.O. routines so we'll put some includes here. And we also need our local MyScanner header. And now the routines that we're going to be using that are defined in that lex.yy.c, there's a function called yylex, and there's also two variables that are defined in that code module that we want to use. So in order to get our compiler to recognize those, we're going to put some declarations in here and we're going to put extern on it because these are defined external outside of this file on a different module. So the function is yylex and it returns an integer and we also want to utilize a variable called yyline number and this will give us more information when we're parsing to generate a helpful error message and then the actual values of the token are found in a variable uh, in a string pointer called yy text. So all we're doing with these definitions is telling the compiler, hey, there's three things that are defined in another module so that when we link our final program, it's going to connect us to those things. Now the other thing I'm going to do is you'll notice that in the in the scanner, it did not return the actual strings that were recognized, but instead it returned it, it returned simple um, integer values that we had in our pound defines. So I'm just going to parse the file here with a very, very primitive brute force parser that calls yylex, and I want to print out some informative messages, so I'm going to put my names into a array that I can access, and I'm going to call that names, and I'm going to initialize it, and since my tokens don't start with a zero, they started at one. I'm just going to put a null in the first one. And db type returned a one, so we'll put the string db type in the first position. Um, db name was next. And now I'm ready to write my parser. So I'm going to put a main routine here. And I'm simply going to parse input from standard input and I need some variables so I'm going to have two different tokens that I deal with at one time a name token and a value token and I can call that yylex um, iteratively to get the token so to get the first token I can simply say n token equals yylex that is going to call my scanner and return the first valid token. So I'm expecting more than one of these. So I'm going to go ahead and put myself in a while loop. And when we hit end of file, yylex is going to return a zero. So as long as I've got a non-zero token, I'm going to keep processing. And just for fun, let's go ahead and just print that token value out right now. So it's a integer.
And the last thing we need to do in the loop is get another token. So we'll so this should process this should turn my stream of input characters into a stream of tokens which are simple integers. So let's go ahead and see if this runs as expected. So we need to say GCC my scanner dot C and we're also going to include the tokenizer and we'll have the output go to a program called my scanner and it looks like I have a typo okay we've got a typo in our scanner so this is not unusual to have a typo that gets by Lex but the C compiler actually finds it later Oh, there it is. We had a colon there instead of a semicolon. So now we're going to have to run Lex again. Okay, so there we got a clean compile. And once again, our input file is config that in. So we should be able to run the program and feed it through redirect standard input from config that in. And sure enough, it returns a stream of tokens, integers. So let's flush this program out just a little bit more. So the next thing we expect, if we've got a name, the next thing has to be a colon. So if it's not a colon, we can print out an informative error message. So we expected a colon, but we found something else. And we can actually retrieve these values. So yy line num um, is the line number that the scanner is currently on. And yy text is the token, the textual representation of the token that it returned us. So if we had an error, we're going to exit right away. So if we don't have a colon, we're going to print out an error. And the next thing we expect is a value token. So once we have our value token, we can go ahead and do something semi-meaningful with these values. So let's switch on the name token. And if it's a type, A name or a table prefix. In these cases, we expected a identifier token type. So if it's not an identifier, we're going to print out an error message here. And it's going to be the same as up here. And if it was valid, we'll just print out a validation statement here. And so we'll retrieve the name of the name from our name array. And the actual value from our last token, which is on the right side of the colon, will be in YY text. If it's a port, we actually expect a number. And if it's anything else, we have an error, a syntax error. run. Sure enough, it processed the file correctly and printed out what it found. Let's go ahead and introduce a syntax error. If 
Sure enough, it found it was looking for an integer on the DB port, but actually found something other than an integer. So this is a very simple example of how we can very quickly write a tokenizer and incorporate it into our C program.